In this section of the lesson, we're going to have a look at the effect of interest rates on asset prices. And again, we're going to be using the transmission mechanism. Let's start with a thinking task. What are assets? Carry out some research or have a little think and jot down any assets that you can think of. Now, these are assets that could be held by households or held by firms in an economy. Pause the video and rejoin me in a minute when you've written down as many as you can think of. OK, so we have got some examples here. So savings accounts, lots and lots of households, but also firms have savings accounts. Pension funds. So we start building those as early as we can when we start work and paying money into a fund which in the hope in the hope that in the future it will pay back and give us an income in our retirement. Government or corporate bonds are forms of assets. It could be property. Now that could be houses. It could be land. It could be fine wine collections. It could be antique cars or antique um, items and it could be shares. Reminder of some of the basics. Can you define the key terms below? Pause the video, define the key terms and join me in a moment. So the basic economic problem. Unlimited wants but finite resources leading to scarcity and the need to make choices. It's well worth revisiting the basic economic problem very frequently because, of course, that's what we're trying to solve throughout the whole of our A-level. Opportunity cost, the cost of the next best alternative foregone when any choice is made. And wealth, the value of someone's assets. It's a stock concept as opposed to a flow concept. And if you're not quite sure what that means, do ask your teacher. We have here a, an, an analytical paragraph about assets and the effect of interest rate changes. In this paragraph here, the interest rates rise. So what I would like you to do is to read the paragraph which analyzes the relationship between rising interest rate and asset prices and identify all the connective words or phrases which will give you a chain of analysis. Secondly, I want you to draw any relevant diagrams that you think would improve the quality of that analysis. And the third thing we would like you to do is to write your own detailed analytical paragraph, but this time explaining the relationship between falling interest rates and asset prices. So pause the video, have a go at those three tasks and join me in due course. So here are all the connective words or phrases in this analytical paragraph. So if this, then that, because this, than that. So what we're doing is, is forcing ourselves to deepen the development, to deepen the analysis of our point when we use these connective words. They help us to give chains of reasoning. They are really important and you must practice them in order to become very good at giving a deep quality answer. Now we're going to have a look at the use of diagrams to enhance our answer. In the third paragraph, it states that demand for assets will fall. We use a microeconomic diagram, so a demand and supply diagram with price of assets, quantity of assets on the axes. We have our initial equilibrium with using S and D at price P, quantity Q. The demand for assets shifts the demand curve to the left, creating D1, and this reduces the equilibrium price of assets to P1 and reduces the equilibrium quantity of assets to Q1. In the final paragraph, we refer to the macroeconomic situation, falling confidence and a negative wealth effect. 
This in turn leads to falling consumer spending and a falling aggregate demand. So here we have our macro diagram with price level and real national output on the axes. And we have aggregate demand shifting left again from AD1 to AD2, which reduces inflationary pressure from P1 to P2 and reduces real national output from Y1 to Y2. Next, we've asked you to write your own detailed analytical paragraph explaining the relationship between falling interest rates and asset prices. Hopefully, you found this relatively straightforward to do because we were reversing the analysis. OK, so now uh, firms, uh, sorry, houses are more likely to borrow because the interest rates are lower in order to pay for assets. Therefore, the demand for assets rises and the market for assets works like any other market. So the price of assets will rise and the equilibrium quantity will rise. If asset prices rise, then household wealth will rise. This leads to increasing confidence because we've had a positive wealth effect. If your assets rise in value, you feel wealthier. This in turn leads to a rise in consumer spending and rising aggregate demand.